If you're running a software development agency, it shouldn't be too hard to grow. Welcome to Managed Coder Podcast. Tune in every week to find out how to grow your software development agency and help you to solve your day-to-day problems. With 20-plus years experience running an agency, please welcome your host, Shahed Islam. Hey, Imad. Um, welcome to our podcast. Uh, thank you for joining. Can you introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you, Shad. I appreciate uh, the opportunity. Uh, Imad Al Sayed, I have a roughly 20 years of corporate experience between General Electric, where I started my career uh, as an engineer, project management, and uh, regional leaders, and spent some time um, in startup companies on the software side and technology and energy as well. Um, get my MBA at the Tepper School of Business in Carnegie Mellon and uh, spent some time in the oil and gas business um, back in GE and Baker Hughes and um, spent some time in Microsoft and strategy and operation. For the last three years, really uh, built my own um, company, which is the Leadership Compass. It's essentially corporate training and consultation for the Fortune 500 on how to develop uh, future leaders and authentic leaders uh, to move the company forward. Uh, just a little bit more about myself, really excited about the discussion today. Thank you. So Imad, um, over the years when I spoke with a lot of the software development, development agency owner, they are somewhere between 10 employees to 500. One thing I have noticed that a lot of these agency owner or leadership team don't think about leadership. They think that this, this word leadership is for bigger company, whether it is Johnson & Johnson or Fortune 500 company. Uh, we are kind of startup. We don't need to think about leadership. Why leadership is important in any organization? That's a great question, Chad. And to be honest with you, I get a lot of that questions also from small, medium-sized companies. They always say, like you rightly said, uh, we let the big corporations, the large corporations care about that. We're worried and we're keen into our development uh, making the customer happy but so my answer is this leadership actually is extremely important and more important in small technology and software companies than bigger companies or middle-sized companies and and i'm going to name a couple of things right one leadership you're responsible for your employees fulfillment and that is the number one thing uh, as the leadership team need to, to be worried about. How can you fulfill the team from um, career and job purpose? And that's going to help the organization to retain those employees in the short and the long term. And also, if you uh, find that employee work purpose, and this is the, the job of the leaders, really, you'll be able to motivate them and help them take the company and your quarterly and yearly goals to the, to, to the next step without your micromanaging them. So one fulfillment, two is retention um, or, or finding their work purpose. And three is um, your, your organizational growth, mm-hmm. right? Let's so talk about... We, Go ahead, Michelle. Yeah, let's talk about this growth, right? We are all wants to grow and then we concentrate too much on growth and we forget about leadership growth here, right? And um, earlier you and me were chatting and you were saying that, you know, when you were growing an agency or if you have 20, 30 members, right? One area you have to start doing is that key development areas of your leadership team. And a lot of time that, First of all, these kind of companies are relying on one or two people who are the founding member. Like, so let's talk about that. You know, what are the areas, you know, you want to develop on people under you? Uh, most likely those people who actually start their agency, they're natural leader, uh, but they also need to develop. But I think both sides, what are the areas you think that we need to concentrate to develop our leadership team? That's a good question. Um, the, the areas, if you, if I have to summarize this, um, what are the key areas that you want to build your 
leaders shifted on. One is understanding the company purpose. And I'm going to unfold the onion here a little bit here. Um, what is the mission and the vision? Why did the company start to begin with? Your leadership team need to be 100% aligned with the mission, uh, vision, mission, and the purpose. What type of impact you want to leave in the community? What type of impact you want to have the users on? That is the number one thing. Once we have that aligned, the technical capabilities, it's, I'm not going to say easily acquired, but it can be acquired. It's something that you can train the your, your leadership on. It's either if it's a financial, it's either it's a development, either it's a software, either engineering. Those skill sets are easily acquired. But in order to be acquired, in order to get those functional leadership skills, you need to be motivated. And how are you going to motivate your team? That is the bigger question because you as a founder, you're going to be busy either uh, with the funding, busy with talking to clients, busy with putting the strategy. So your layer under you or, or the front liners in front of the customers, they have to be clear on what um, what's important as a company, which is again the purpose. Two is um, the communication with your employees, so they can feel that they are part of something bigger. A lot of the new generations today, and Chad, I'm pretty sure you've seen it also on your end. Um, huge turnover ratio, huge huge attrition. It's actually and bigger in our industry. Like on software Huge. development, like people coming and going every month sometimes. So it, it, to your point, there are uh, studies out there that shows companies with purposeful mission. And if the purpose is clearly understood to employees, you can improve your attrition by 51%. So a lot of the my team that I work with, they spent a lot of time on that because a lot of the organizations, you know, either the small, big size companies, they know what they're here for. But your employees do not know exactly what type of impact you want to have. That is the purpose. Once that aligned, your team will be motivated to take your organization forward without you micromanaging them. They will do it on your behalf. Why? Because you hit the why. And this is what, what we we'll talk. We don't talk about the why a lot in me in business school. Or, or even my engineering days in engineering school, we don't talk about the why. We talk about the technical skills. But it's very important to connect that your employees' why and the employees' purpose to the company purpose so they can manage it and grow it for you on your behalf. I hope that makes sense. No, like it does definitely make sense. I mean, this is the area where a lot of us don't spend time on and i regret also in early days i did not spend enough time developing my team members so when you select certain team members let's say and i heard from you before also you know building a authentic leadership team right and a pipeline of people under you you need to build right so what are the steps how do i do that like sometimes somebody is growing right they're like don't have enough time but they think that oh i need to send them to an mba school is it like that or within the work environment you can actually build a leadership team or authentic leaders uh, in your organization how do you do good. it good good question so i did go to the mba and spent some of money in that and I, it, it did help my growth and i wouldn't be here today if i didn't do that but um i'll break it down into few elements that any software companies, technology companies, web development companies can do today. And those are the following. One, understanding the company purpose. And I know it sounds like a broken record, but it's going to lead to something. Understand the company purpose and simplify it to your employees and your leadership team. What is it about? And simplify it so you can actually understand. Two, Align your organization quarterly and yearly goals to that organization purpose. And, it, and I think it, it's, 
it's clear, but sometimes we come up with 10, 20 different goals, but actually a handful of those, those are the most important. Those are what is going to take your organization forward. That's what's going to build your authentic leadership to your team. So two, aligning those quarterly and yearly goals to that purpose. Number three, uh, understand what's your employees work purpose. For example, me, I love mentoring people. I love leadership development. If my work does that, if my work ties to that every single day, I'm going to get up extremely excited. So the step number three, aligning the individual work purpose to those goals uh, that you already put in place, which aligns with your organization purpose. And number four, and I think that's the most important, show that you care. Show that you understand your teams and individual work. In tough times, uh, lead with care. And in, in, when the team will stumble and drop the ball, roll up your sleeve and work with them and show them what they've done right. Start with the right. A lot of the leaders start with the wrong. And we're all guilty of this, but start what are the three things that they've done right and the three things that they can improve on. Right? So I think those are the key steps, Shahid, in, in my view, and I've developed that with too many organizations small, medium-sized, large companies, and uh, it helped the attrition, it helped the motivation, it helped meeting and exceeding the numbers. So basically your organization is helping other companies to build, like let's say a few people inside the organization, giving them guidance, how to build a leadership team and kind of training, am I right? Yes. 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 So let's talk about that. What are ways a leadership team can grow right um over the years what i found out to grow my agency what i have done i put enough time on leadership like you know growing myself as a leader right i read books every week i listen to certain podcasts and then i follow up i mean what you talked about some of it i have done it but then the biggest challenge imad we have is that we are all busy right we are always coming in and doing email and client follow-up, but we forget about this, teaching ourselves that even empathy is an easy word, but sometimes if you don't read enough about empathy, you probably would not learn. There are leaders which I found out, they were telling me, I don't know how to motivate team members. And I was telling them, this is a skill set, just like if you are playing soccer or if you are playing something, or if you are learning programming, you need to learn some of these things either through self-learning or go through someone who will give you guidance. So what are your advice to those you know, companies? How do they create a learning environment for their leadership team? That's a, a, that's a really good question. Uh, um, and it's easier said than done, like you said. Um, I'm going to start with this. Why do we fall back on our hardcore leadership? Why do we fall back on our yearly and quarterly goals and achieve those then helping developing teams and leadership? Um, we don't understand quite yet. And again, I'm speaking as an engineer and now a business leader. We don't quite, quite understand the power of the subconscious mind. And we don't understand how we can neuralize the power of the subconscious mind to our benefits and our advantages and our organization first. The subconscious mind, and I can speak about this all day, but I'm just gonna say one minute on it. The subconscious mind actually controls more than 95 to 99% of our action and decisions that we take on a daily basis. And that's what also boils down to you chasing the team about numbers or misses or customer than the training and the leadership and the environment. Uh, one is the awareness. So um, Thomas Edison was aware of this. He, uh, he used to actually, in order to come up with few envision and vision and light bulbs, 
and there is a lot of different codes and experiments on life. What he used to do, he used to take a nap with an orb in his hand, and when the orb is falls from his hand, it wakes him up so he can complete the idea. Because he knew that the power of the subconscious mind is not easily um, it's not easily attained when you're awake and you're running and ch chasing things. You have to get to something that's called the theta wave of the mind, which is the bank of everything you learn and everything you want to tell your team and everything you want to move it into the team. So that's the backdrop of what's making us move or making us uh, chase numbers, customers, uh, things can, that the team can do better than developing the leadership. So in order to develop the learning leadership is one understanding um, that everybody understanding the true north of the organization, which is the purpose. That's a lead, as a leader, that's the one on one. You gotta know what it is. The true north, what is the what is the what 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 is the purpose of the organization? Two, um, what is the next step of the organization that you want to grow uh, into? I.e., if it's um, market share, if it's uh, improving the margin, improving the things like that, those are the things that you as a leader need to sit down on and utilize in the power of the subconscious mind. And there's a lot of different training between visualization, affirmations that actually uh, medically proven to show you how you can build that muscle. Once you have a clear picture of how to do that, and one of them is how to build the, the training development team in the organization, um, you'll, you can put that 10 to 15 minutes in your calendar, in your, uh, in your calendar to talk to your team around. Mm -hmm. So I personally, I personally have one-on-one -on -one with all my direct hires or my direct team or the extended staff one on half an hour. I spend 15 minutes on the updates and 15 minutes on what are you struggling with from day to day? Mm -hmm. And what are the things that you need help with from me? And also in those 15 minutes, I share with them, this is my vision. And this is what I reflect on from a subconscious mind perspective, because you cannot get that when, our chase, when we're chasing our day to day. And I b believe me, um, in those 15 minutes, we come up with tremendous amount of ideas on how to move the company forward, what type of training that we need to put in place, what are the skill sets that we need to improve on as an organization. And those employees actually raise their hands and they're willing to go do the work for the organization themselves because they feel the part of the process, they feel the part of the solution. And that that's actually tells everything about how to start the discussion, how to improve the discussion about the training and development. You don't need an MBA. You know, you need those three steps. Nice. Um, and I'm here um, mm -hmm. if anybody needs help or extra support in that venue. Uh, happy to check. Sure. Imad, what is the best way to contact you? Um, um, I have a huge presence. Uh, I have, um, and I think ongoing uh, workshops for LinkedIn. If anybody want to drop me a note on LinkedIn, I'm easily accessible there. I have a bi-weekly workshop with uh, VPs of HRs and CEOs uh, that I connect with every two weeks. We'll talk about these type of topics improving the leadership, company growth, attrition, motivation, and they're all medically and scientifically proven. So reach me in, in LinkedIn, or um, I can also drop my email uh, in there, which is imad.alsaid at leadership uh, compass online. Thank you, Imad. Very nice uh, talking to you. Uh, we ran out of time. Hopefully, we'll catch up next time. Thank you, Shad. I appreciate the opportunity and I look forward to working with everybody with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. 
To catch all the latest from us, you can follow us on Twitter at Managed Coder or visit our website at managedcoder.com. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. 